I reached a thousand subscribers! Good day everyone and welcome to Adventures with Parker. Today I have a very special episode for you because if you haven't heard the news, I reached a thousand subscribers here on Adventures with Parker. And look, Finnegan's here to celebrate with us. Yeah, Papa reached a thousand subscribers. But yes, this is a huge milestone and it's something I've been working towards for quite a while now. I mean, I started my channel over six years ago at this point and um, definitely within the last three or four years, it's been an active goal of mine to reach a thousand subscribers and ultimately I want to work towards monetization, which I still need to do a few more things before I do that. But yeah, to finally reach that goal after all these years is just so surreal to me. It, it still hasn't fully hit me like it has, but then I'm like, wait, that, that really happened? We really did that? So yeah, it, it's just been incredible. And a thousand subscribers, let's think about what that means. That's 1,000 individuals who believe in me, who support me, who share my passions and interests for theme parks, who encourage me on a daily basis. And to all of you, I just say thank you. It, it really does mean a lot to me. And that number doesn't even encapsulate everyone who supports my channel. I know there's a few of you out there who watch my videos on a pretty consistent basis and who support what I do, but who aren't subscribed. And I see you as well. You guys are just as important to me. So thank you to you as well. But yeah, like I said, in today's video, I wanted to celebrate by doing a little q and I recently sent out a call on all of my social media platforms asking for some questions and I got quite a few responses and I'm really excited to share the answers to some of those today. And then in the last part of today's video, I am going to share some of the plans that I have for the rest of the month and for the rest of the year and just how I plan on finishing off this season. So yeah, it's gonna be a great show. So without any further ado, let's jump in with our first question. All right, so our first question today comes from Coaster Bro from the Coaster Cuzzies podcast. Hey, Caleb. And he asks, what does Waldemir do better than Cedar Point? Okay, some background here. Caleb has been on me to get to Waldemir for the longest time. I'm not that far away from it. Actually, if there wasn't a big lake in the way, it would be the closest theme park to me as the crow flies. But uh, I always end up going to Cedar Point instead because it's a little easier for me to get to and it's on my Cedar Fair Platinum Pass, so it's kind of free. But having finally been to Waldemir this past summer, I can see the appeal of the park and I, I gotta admit, there are some things that it does better than Cedar Point. The first of which is the value. And again, I have a Platinum Pass, so this doesn't really apply to me. But if you're going on a single day ticket basis, Waldemere is the cheaper of the options and you do definitely get your value for your money there. I also really love Waldemere's dark rides. There's the Wacky Shack and there's a pirate themed walkthrough. Both of them are done by Bill Tracy and they are so freaking cool. And that's something that Cedar Point really lacks. It really needs a dark ride and I'm surprised they don't have one. They used to have some back in the 60s, like there was Pirate's Cove and there was Earthquake, but they, they haven't had one since and Waldemere definitely has some beat there. Waldemir also has Ravine Fire too, which is currently my number one wooden coaster. If it's not number one, it's definitely in my top three. And Cedar Point currently doesn't really have any standout woody. There's Blue Street, which is great, but I, I wouldn't consider it a top woody in my opinion. So yeah, Waldemir has that going for it over Cedar Point. It is a really nice, small, cute little park though, and I'm hoping to go back to it next summer. All right, question number two comes from my friend Tom, and he asks, do you have any new parks on the list for 2024? Okay, so planning for next year is a little difficult because uh, for those of you who don't know, I just started grad school. I'm doing my master's in biology and the summer is when I'm going to do a lot of my field research. I'm actually gonna be stationed out in Long Point to do some bird banding. And um, yeah, I don't know how much time I'm gonna be able to get away from that to visit the parks. So this is all very much up in the air and I don't know if we're gonna make these things happen or not, but if I can, I am hoping to go to CoasterCon in California, which will include Six Flags Discovery Kingdom and California's Great America. And then uh, since I'd be going all the way to California, the plan would also be to do some other parks out there, like go down south and do uh, Knott's Berry Farm, Magic Mountain, maybe Disneyland. So. Oh, I really want it to happen, but again, I don't know if I can afford to take that much time off from my research. Some other parks on my radar are Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I've been wanting to get out there for a while. And I also want to see if I can get to Lost Island. That park seems so cool and so immersive and they really need a lot of support right now. And 
if I can get myself out there, I'd love to give them that support. And I think that's it for new parks, at least at the moment. Maybe I'll sneak in a trip to La Ronde in Montreal. I might try to get back to Hershey next year. I might try to get to Kettywood since I didn't go this year. And I've been wanting to get back to Carowinds, but that is a little far for me. So we'll see what happens. Okay, next up we have a question from Scott and he sent in a few questions here. Uh, the first one is, what is your favorite non-theme park adventure that you have had? That is a great question. In terms of the past year, at least, I think I'd have to say Coral Caverns, and that's this big show cave located in southwestern Pennsylvania. And it was really cool because it's basically this fossilized coral reef that uh, over millions and millions of years has shifted up into the Appalachians in Pennsylvania. And you can go in, you can see the fossils, and the tour guide, his name was Bill, he was this really cool older gentleman, and he gave me like a one-on-one -on -one tour, and he took a lot of really awesome photos for me in the cave. So that was just such a cool experience, and it kind of brought out the uh, geology and paleontology nerd in me. Yeah, I'm gonna be sharing the vlog from that adventure soon, as soon as I get back into my uh, Pennsylvania road trip series. But yeah, that, that was really cool. The other big one that sticks out to me is the aerial tour over Toronto that I did a couple summers ago. That was actually a gift from my grandmother for me, Mike, my mom, and her husband. And we just had such an incredible time. It was like the views up there were so stunning, like to see the city and the lake and the Toronto Island. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Um, but yeah, that, that was just an amazing memory for me. Okay, another question from Scott here. He asks, what is your favorite ride at each park you have visited? Ooh, okay, I'm gonna have to think back about where, uh, where I've been this year. Okay, so for my own home park, Canada's Wonderland, I'm always going back and forth between Leviathan and Yukon Striker. Right now, I think I'm leaning more towards Yukon Striker. For Cedar Point, I'm gonna have to go with Maverick. For Dorney, I'd have to go with Demon Drop. That's our first gen Intamin Drop Tower, and you don't find a lot of those anymore in theme parks today, so it's really cool that they still have one, and it's so fun and so janky, but just just a really cool and thrilling experience. For Knobles, I'm always back and forth between Phoenix and Twister. I really do love Phoenix. It is one of my favorite wooden coasters out there. For Hershey Park and, okay, this is a bit of a spoiler here, but Wild Cat's Revenge was so freaking good. And I currently have it ranked as my number one roller coaster in the world. So. Um, yeah, easily going to that coaster there. It is just a great mix of elements. It's really well balanced. It's got some good pacing, some cool theming. So um, again, that vlog's coming out soon and uh, I can't wait to share my full thoughts on that coaster. Jumping over to Six Flags St. Louis, um, I think I'd have to say Mr. Freeze. That is an amazing coaster and totally worth the trip to Six Flags St. Louis on its own. Uh, the boss is up there for me as well. I think that is a seriously underrated coaster and it reminds me of a more intense version of the beast. For Silver Dollar City, I think I'd have to go with Time Traveler. It is just so cool. And I mean, I love me a good Mac launch coaster. For Worlds of Fun, I think I'd have to say Prowler. What else did I go to this year? Oh, Kings Island. Kings Island, I'd have to say Mystic Timbers. I love that ride so much. I mean, I'm a big fan of wooden coasters and Mystic Timbers is one of the best out there. For Kentucky Kingdom, I'm between Lightning Run and Storm Chaser. I think, I think I'd give it to Storm Chaser. For Holiday World, um, The Voyage, yeah. I mean, Thunderbird was also really good, but I think I'm gonna have to go with The Voyage. I'm thinking back to my latest trip at the beginning of September, for Six Flags Great Adventure, I'd have to give it to El Toro, Nickelodeon Universe at Mall of America, I think I'd have to say Sandy's Blasting Broncos. It was open for us and it was running really good and it is a great ride, so if you get a chance to ride it, do it because it is so freaking fun. Lake Compounds? Um, that's a tough one because I didn't like Boulder Dash my first time around, but when I did a night ride on it later, it definitely like shot up in my personal rankings. Yeah, I think I have to say Boulder Dash, but specifically for the night ride. And the last park I visited this year was Six Flags Great Escape. And I mean, the Comet is iconic. That was really fun. But um, the Adirondack Outlaw really stuck out to me as well. That's like the big whip style ride. And it is so crazy, but you get some amazing views of the Adirondacks from the top there. So yeah, I think I'd give it to that one. Question number five comes from Evie. Hey Evie. And she asks, what is your favorite vlog that you made? And that is 
a great question. It's so hard to pick one favorite. I mean, my Halloween haunt vlogs are always ones that come to mind and every year I feel like I outdo myself. I mean, I just love those ones because I put a lot of work into the intros and I, um, I love chatting with the characters and I love kind of creating this spooky vibe throughout the video. So I put a lot of production value into those ones. Other than that, I think my uh, my Dollywood vlog is one that really sticks out, especially because we got to see Dolly Parton like three times through the day. <laughs> that was just so surreal. My Clover Bead vlog also comes to mind. That was a cool one. That's this adventure farm out in Elmer and I got to visit with my cousins and we just had such a great day hanging out there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ones that I love. I actually have a playlist of uh, my favorites that I update now and then. But yeah, anyways, moving on to question number six. Midcourse Blues asks, what coasters do you have a crush on? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, what a weird question. Um, I think I'm gonna have to say Copperhead Strike. I mean, it was my number one coaster for a hot minute and even though it might have slipped down the list, I still have a soft spot for it. So yeah, Copperhead, if you're ever free, just uh, call me. <laughs> All right, our next question comes from Steve and he asks, have you or do you want to work at a theme park? Which one and doing what? Okay, this is a cool question because um, I, I have thought about working at theme parks before. I've always thought that it would be cool to be a uh, Disney cast member. And every so often I keep thinking, oh, maybe when I finish my degree, I'll, I'll go and do a year at Disney, which is still kind of on the table. I'm not sure if it'll actually happen, but it's something that I've always thought about. And if I did that, I'd love to either work in the Haunted Mansion, be a Jungle Cruise skipper, or be one of the uh, tour guides on Kilimanjaro Safaris. And I think that last one would be really cool because it combines my love of theme parks and Disney with my love of biology and all that kind of stuff. So I think that'd be a really cool fit. So yeah. And I mean, I love the storytelling aspect of theme parks. So there's a part of me who's always wanted to be a Disney Imagineer or work for Universal Creative, or I know there's a few like other firms too, like there's Legacy Entertainment. But yeah, I, I think it'd be really cool to work for one of those companies and like come up with concepts and ideas for theme parks. I don't really know much about the engineering side of things, but at least in terms of like the ideas, I think that's something I'd love to do. Actually, fun story, before I started my undergrad, I almost applied to the University of Central Florida's theme park management program that's done through the, uh, the I think it's Rosin College. But uh, I like filled out an application and everything. I was gonna, like I was all ready to send it, but then I looked at the price and it was super expensive because I would be an international student coming in from Canada. So it, it kind of became a little unrealistic. Plus my grandparents weren't too thrilled about that idea. And I mean, I eventually ended up at Western University. And uh, I mean, again, I'm a big science person. I love biology and eventually found my way doing what I do now. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. But if I ever end up becoming a multimillionaire, I uh, I will be opening my own theme park. That's uh, just throwing that out there. Okay, next question comes from Sky Guy, and he asks, "Do you like the Canada joke from South Park?" Now, I've never watched South Park myself. I was never allowed to watch those kinds of cartoons growing up. Like I never really grew up with The Simpsons or Family Guy or any of those adult cartoons. And yeah, because of that, I just never got into them as an adult either. So. I don't really know exactly what the Canada joke is. I, I do know there's a Canadian connection. And I mean, I'm always happy to see Canadians represented in TV. So, and I, I know with South Park, it's pretty iconic. So I guess I'm down for it. I just don't know the details. So yeah. Okay, we have a question from HC who asks, bucket list Asian coaster slash tourist slash to do slash to eat list. Oh my gosh, this is such a loaded question because there are so many cool places in Asia that I love to visit. Um, off the top of my head, uh, Shanghai Disney, Hong Kong Disneyland, uh, Universal Beijing, um, Universal Japan, uh, Fuji Q Highland, Nagashima Spa Land. Um, oh, I'd love to go to Genting Sky Worlds in Malaysia. That park seems really cool. It's the park that it was originally going to open as like a Fox Studios park, but then there's some licensing issues once Disney bought out Fox, but it eventually opened with some IPs. Anyways, there's a whole history and story about it, but that park seems super cool. I'd love to visit that one. It's kind of built on top of a mountain. And I mean, I just love to explore and 
experience some of the culture. Like I'd love to tour around Shanghai. I'd love to tour around all the big sites in Beijing. I mean, again, Singapore, Tokyo, not to mention all of the cool like ancient sites in like Cambodia and Thailand, the wildlife watching opportunities. Yeah, I mean, that continent is just rich of history and culture and good parks. So it is definitely on my bucket list to get over there someday. I don't know when, but one of these days, it's gonna happen and it's gonna be amazing. Okay, couple more questions from Scott here. And he asked, why is Scott so funny, cute, amazing, talented, smart, and humble? Yeah, so humble. He is the humblest person I know. Um, definitely not full of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, Scott is one of my best friends. He, um, we actually met through uh, Gavin and Patrick's channel because they used to be these live streams and we would both be commenting and we ended up meeting through there. We've done a few theme park trips already. So but yeah, Scott's a really cool guy. Um, to answer your question, um, I don't know. We'll just, uh, we'll blame it on the corn. He lives in Indiana. So being surrounded by that much corn must do something to your brain chemistry. <laughs> A real question from Scott, not to discredit the last one, but this time he asked, what are my top five theme park meals that I've had? Oh, top five. Okay, um, Holiday World Thanksgiving, uh, Lazy Bear Lodge stuffed pepper, the noodles that I've had from Skipper Canteen. This is in no particular order, by the way. I'm just kind of going by what's coming to my, uh, to my brain. Oh, the, um, I forget what they're called, but they're these, like, kind of like stir fry bowls that you get from Satuli Canteen and Pandora. I don't know, I pretty much like anything I get from the farmhouse at Cedar Point. Mind you, the portion sizes have gone down a little bit lately, but you do get pretty good food there. Oh, an honorable mention to the crab fries from Chickies and Pete's. They are so good. Okay, next question comes from Fiesta Texas Thrills who asks, most painful toaster. So in the past, I would have said Grizzly at King's Dominion, but that coaster recently had a lot of retracking work, and from what I've heard, it's greatly improved the ride experience. So I haven't been to the park since, but I guess it's redeemed itself. So, uh, time more. Yeah, I, I do not like that one. The riding position is just so uncomfortable, and you're either like pushing up on your shoulders, or the, the ladder bit that you stand on is digging into your shins. I just, there's no, unpainful way to ride the ride. Like it's a fun concept, but it's just not enjoyable. I'm sorry, but it's not. All right, we got a question from that guy from Saskatoon. Hey Logan. And he asks, bucket list Canadian adventures. Okay, so the one thing that I've really wanted to do is, uh, well, I've never been out west before. Like I've been to Alberta, but I've never been to BC. And they offer this like kayaking excursion where uh, you kind of like, paddle up the coast for a week and uh, it takes you into an area where there are killer whales so you're kayaking with the orcas and I think that is so freaking cool and then like you stay in cabins over the night you have bonfires I think I learned about that back in high school and ever since I'm like one of these days I'm gonna make that happen of course I'd love to explore Vancouver I'd love to do like the Capilano suspension bridge and explore like the rainforest out there I'd love to go to Quebec City in the winter to do their uh, winter carnival I think that's held in February every year but that's a big event and that's where if you've ever seen the Bonhomme character that's where that comes from and they have like an ice hotel and they have uh, toboggan rides and they have ice sculpture competitions it's just so cool and uh, it's a really big part of Canadian culture and I'd love to experience that for myself. Mike's been back in the day and he actually has a, uh, I'm gonna get it for you. So this is called the Banam stick and it has like the uh, Banam character head on this end. But then it's this long tube and you basically fill it with um, alcoholic beverages and you can carry it around and there's different stations where you can get it refilled and uh, you can drink throughout the night and yeah, it says uh, Carnival de Quebec on it. So yeah, I'm really jealous that Mike got to go, but uh, we need to go together one of these days for sure. And I mean, I've already been to Alberta, but I'd love to go again. Drumheller is really cool. I'd love to hike in the Rockies again. And I've never really had a chance to properly explore Calgary. My only experience with that city was landing and leaving from the airport. So I'd love to, you know, actually explore the city and see what they have to offer. And uh, I'd love to get up to Edmonton as well. And I mean, West Edmonton Mall. I mean, they don't have Mindbender anymore, but it, it still seems like a cool place, especially after experiencing American Dream Mall in New Jersey. I'd love to see how the two compare. Alrighty, next question comes from The Real House Gamer, who asks, 
what is your least favorite park that you've been to and is your least favorite ride also at that park so least favorite park would have to be lake compounds like they don't have a lot of great rides there and i mean boulder dash is supposed to be the star attraction but it is so rough like it's almost unbearable and like i said my night ride on it did kind of make up for it um i don't know what changed yeah i go over this in my uh, late compounds vlog which again is coming at some point in the future but yeah just our experience at that park wasn't great like the employees just seem so tired and almost like rude at points and the food offerings were abysmal. I mean, I was with my friend Mitch, who's vegan, so he couldn't really eat much. Like, we got some potato patch fries, but they were so flavorless. Like, it was awful. And it just, yeah, it wasn't a great park experience. And I'd like to think that there are better days. Like, parks always have their good days and their bad days, but yeah, it, like, compounds just wasn't it for us. And then, I mean, Boulder Dash, I would say, is the most disappointing ride I've ever been on, but I definitely wouldn't call it my least favorite. It certainly has some redeeming qualities there, but uh, that distinction, again, would have to go to Time Warp, and uh, as I mentioned in the last question, it's just unbearably painful, and I hate it. Yeah. Okay, only got a few more questions here. Oh, actually, you know what? I lied. We only have one more. Question number 15 comes from Matt from Storybook Amusement and he asks what has been your favorite moment or video on the channel so far and in brackets he puts a mouse emoji, a castle emoji, and a ring emoji. So I kind of already went over some of my favorite videos but in terms of favorite moment, yeah my proposal to Mike at Disney is definitely at the top of that list. Like that was just so, like so incredible and so so magical and damn it I'm crying on camera <laughs> yeah like like that that's just a special moment that I'll never forget and all of the cast members like who helped make that moment special who, who filmed it and the guests who stopped and filmed it and all the extra things they did and just, just the fact that I got to be with the love of my life and one of my favorite places was yeah, here comes the waterworks. We're gonna move on. <laughs> you get the point. Okay, other favorite moments. Um, I mean, the seagull in Tobermory is super iconic. So if you guys have not seen my series from uh, when Mike and I went up to Tobermory, you have to watch it, especially part one, because we got attacked by seagulls at dinner. <laughs> it just kind of became this like core AWP memory. Um, again, the aerial tour over Toronto is up there for me. Doing mountainside cliffs for the first time at Canada's Wonderland, like my little fancy scream was... Whew. And then this one hasn't been released yet, but when I get around to doing my Indiana Beach vlog, I do their sky coaster and uh, I have my reaction on camera and um, all I'm gonna say is headphone users beware. Actually, I think that video has been posted to my Instagram, so you might already know what I'm talking about, but uh, that, that's a pretty funny and iconic moment. Okay, so that's going to do it for the questions and answers portion of this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll get around to them as soon as I can. But uh, for the rest of this video, I just want to kind of go over some of my plans for the month of October and um, some preliminary plans for the rest of the season, starting with tonight. So. Mike and I are actually getting ready to go to Alumi, which is in Mississauga. And from what I understand, it's basically this huge immersive walkthrough light display. And uh, they, they kind of split it up with different like worlds or like universes. So one is gonna be like Halloween and fall themed. One is uh, like dinosaurs, one is a fantasy forest. I think that's gonna be super fun and it's gonna be a cute little date night for us as well. And um, I also have some adventures that I've already filmed and I'm just working on editing and putting them out now. But I did Halloween weekends at Cedar Point last month and uh, that video I'm really excited to share. I'm gonna do a big intro skit for that one as well. If you've uh, seen my Instagram, you might have seen some hints at uh, what characters may or may not appear. And I also went to the Norfolk County Fair, which is my home county fair in Simcoe, Ontario. And I always have a good time visiting that. And, but yes, looking forwards for the rest of the month, it's gonna be pretty busy, but in a week or so, I don't exactly remember when, but at some point, uh, I'm actually going to be going to Dorney Park for their Halloween haunt. And that's gonna be a trip I do with uh, Toronto Tide from Wonderland Weekly. 
that's going to be super cool and super fun. And it'll be interesting to see how they do their Halloween haunt compared to ours here at Wonderland. I'm also hoping to do Fear Farm, which is a local haunt out in Kitchener, Ontario. I've seen videos from other creators there and I have been wanting to go for years. I think this finally might be the year I make it happen. So uh, fingers crossed that that all works out. And then at the end of the month, my mom and I are going to see a screening of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I don't know how much vlog content I'm going to be able to get because I don't think I'll be able to film it inside the theater, but uh, I'm at least hoping to share some of my thoughts on the experience overall. Okay, looking forward to the future, November, December. I'm definitely going to be doing a vlog and review from Winterfest at Canada's Wonderland. That's another one of my videos that I do every year, so very much looking forward to that. I'm going to do a vlog from the Simco Panorama, which is another light-up display, but this one is uh, closer to my hometown, and I grew up going to this place every year, and that's always a fun one to show off. At some point next month, uh, Mike and his mom and I, we're going to do a trip in Toronto. We don't know exactly what we're going to do yet. We just, uh, we, we have a discount on a train ticket that we want to use and we just want to do something fun for today. So, um, yeah, more Toronto adventures to come there. And I think that's pretty much all that I have planned that I, uh, that I want to share for now. But yeah, that's going to be it. And again, thank you so much for helping me to get to 1,000 subscribers. It does mean a lot to me. Now, I meant to mention this earlier, but I'm not monetized yet. I still need to satisfy another requirement, which is uh, to get four hours of watch time over the past 365 days. So that just refers to the amount of time that people are watching my content. So yeah, I mean, that'll just come up on its own. But if you wanted to help me out with that, a good way to do that is if every one of my subscribers could, I don't know, maybe watch my Halloween haunt vlog. That's an hour long video. Watch that from start to finish. And then find another one of your favorite vlogs that I've done and watch that one start to finish as well. And then that, that, that should really do it. So that, that's coming up soon. But yeah, that's my next goal. Just increase my watch time and uh, work towards monetization, which is uh, pretty freaking cool. In the meantime, if this happens to be your first time watching my channel, I mean, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I usually do videos about theme parks, travel, and other kinds of attractions. So yeah, if that sounds like something that interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's see how long it takes us to get to uh, 2,000 subscribers. You can also find me on social media. I'm at ADB Parker on Instagram, Threads, and X, and I'm at Adventures with Parker on TikTok and Facebook. As always, big shout out to my patrons for all of the extra support you guys give the channel. If you don't know, Patreon is basically a platform where you can support the channel and support what I do and help me grow and improve. And in return, I'll give you some cool bonus content and things like that. And then there's my merch shop. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention. So currently my merch can be found on Adventure Outpost, awpmerch.myspreadshop.com. But I'm actually thinking about going with a different merch provider. So that link may be changing in the near future. So stay tuned for, uh, for those changes coming soon. But yeah, again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And until next time, the adventures are calling. See ya.